The other element that I'll talk about in detail is that pre-trial detention, another word for that, is remand. And so far, the Youth Criminal Justice Act has done a really poor job of reducing the number of youth on remand. In fact, remand has basically steadily increased over around the last 10 years, and youth are also spending more time on remand. So what does remand mean? It's where you're in custody, awaiting your trial, awaiting sentencing, you're awaiting all the other outcomes of the court process. We know now what remand is. How are the decisions about remand made? How do we decide who is remanded and who is released on bail into the community? And most of the decisions about remand have very little to do with the offense that the person has committed and is before the court for. Most decisions about remand come down to the primary ground or the secondary ground. The primary ground is where the individual needs to be remanded to ensure attendance in court, to make sure that they actually show up to court. The secondary ground relates to the need to prevent the individual from committing future crimes against or having contact with the victim. So just like those no contact associations or that I mentioned before, in this case, under the secondary ground, Crown Council might argue that this individual is at risk or likely to contact the victim of the offense to try and threaten them to against testifying in court or wants further payback against the victim because the victim contacted police. Other times it will be because it's almost impossible to ensure that the individual does not contact the victim, especially if the victim is a family member. The tertiary ground is basically in cases where if the individual under investigation is released into the community, it would bring the criminal justice system into disrepute. So what we mean by this is that if an individual has committed a particularly horrific offense, like let's say we're talking about Clifford Olson, Robert Picton, we looked at, for example, for younger persons, individuals like Tristan Vickers in the Lower Mainland or Cruz Wellwood and Cameron Moth from Victoria who committed sexual homicide offenses. Their offenses were so horrific that even if we could ensure that they would always attend court and even if we could ensure that they were not going to have any contact with their victims or victims' family, if they were released, the public might begin to lose faith in the ability of the justice system to protect its citizens. When it comes to youth, maybe the most common reasons for why a judge will deny bail under the primary ground relates to if the youth has no fixed address or if the youth cannot be returned to a suitable caregiver. So NFA or no fixed address essentially means that the young person does not have a stable residence or a home to live at. The suitable guardian question is kind of straightforward. If the judge believes that the parent isn't going to be capable of ensuring that the youth attends court, then the youth is more likely to be detained under the primary ground. And I can kind of take issue with both of these justifications because we're almost criminalizing not the person's behavior, but the person's socioeconomic status. A more justifiable one is if the youth has a prior history of not abiding by court conditions and not showing up in court. So if we're talking to little Johnny and Johnny is now 15 and has got like 16 breaches in their past, well, okay, maybe they cannot be counted on to appear in court. So maybe they're remand is necessary. For that secondary ground, reasons to deny bail relate to whether it's impossible to keep the young person separate from the victim, such as if they're living in the same home. We can also take a look at the person's conduct post-arrest. For example, maybe they, while awaiting their bail hearing, maybe they had already reached out to threaten the victim. Like, young kids are particularly, I don't want to call them stupid, but young people in general just make poor decisions than adults, and we know that this has a lot to do with the development of the brain, impulsivity, 
poor functioning in the frontal lobe or an underdeveloped frontal lobe and temporal lobe. And so they'll get on Instagram or whatever and they will message some the victim and say like, hey, if you talk to the police, I'm going to kill you. And then the victim screenshots this, shows this to a teacher, shows it to the police, and now the young person can easily be detained under the secondary ground. Same thing pre-arrest. So maybe the individual thinks that they're about to get caught by police or doesn't want the victim to come forward so they threaten the victim and that's a good indication that well they threaten the victim the victim went to police anyways maybe the young person is going to try to get retribution there's a very important section of the ycj it's section 29.2 basically creates a rebuttal presumption that detention on the secondary ground can only be justified if the person could also receive a custody sentence for their index offense. The index offense is the offense that they're currently before the court for. So remember a couple of weeks ago, we talked about four gateways to custody under the YCGA, and I'll go over them again today. If the young person isn't before the court for one of those sort of four offense types, then the secondary ground cannot be used even if there is evidence of coercion pre-arrest, as an example, or coercion post-arrest, or there's a threat that the individual is going to contact the victim because they live in the same home. So the secondary ground can only be used to justify remand if the young person has committed an offense for which if they received a sentence for that offense, that sentence could be a custody sentence. That tertiary ground I kind of talked about in a bit of detail, but basically if there's no way to justify the primary ground or secondary ground, but it's a particularly serious offense and the public would lose faith in the justice system, then Crown Council could try and apply for remand under the tertiary ground. For Crown Council, so if you're interested in being Crown Council, you need to understand that the tertiary ground is kind of like same logic as the use of a Mr. Big Sting. You can only really begin to think of the tertiary ground if you know that you would not be successful under the primary ground or under the secondary ground.